I put this one from a really old movie called Austin Powers, A Simple Harmonic Motion. Yes, yeah, simple. Okay, let's do an example uh, with more advanced simple harmonic motion. So let's look at this. We have an object that undergoes SHM as shown. So we've got a dotted line here for reference, and then we've got this real graph, which is actually this blue one, which everything is shifted to the left. Do you notice like this point right here went to the left? This one over here went to the left and so on. So the first question though is, what's the maximum displacement? Well, what can we tell from this graph right here? We can tell the amplitude. You see that this distance from the center right here to the top? That right there we're going to call the amplitude. And what is the amplitude? Well, in this case right here, let's see, the amplitude is just going to be 4, right? Because it's from 0 to here, this is 4. So it's going to be 4, and what are the units? It's meters. Well, what does this tell us? Well, this is helpful because the maximum displacement is the amplitude. We call it actually x0. That's even better. x0 is equal to 4. So there we go. We've got our first one already done, part A. That was easy. Okay, so let's look at part B where we want to know what's the angular frequency. What are we really looking for? We want omega. That's what we're looking for. So uh, we have an equation that's going to help us out, so maybe we'll just go get that one from our data booklet, which goes t equals 1 over f, which is also equal to 2 pi over omega. Now I don't know f, but I can tell t from this graph. See, we have a graph on the x-axis, there's time, so I can tell the period. So that means I'm going to use this equation then and say, ah, that means I'm going to say t equals 2 pi over omega, well, that means then I can get omega by itself and say omega equals then, well, I put this up, put this one down, so I have 2 pi over t. In other words, I need to know what is the period. And I can tell the period from this one. I mean, the blue one's a little bit hard to tell, but the black dotted line one, that's also the same period. Because see, this black dotted line one, the period of that one is the same as the blue one, because every point on this graph has been moved to the left by the same amount. If that's the case, then the period of this one here, which is four seconds, you notice that's the time to do one whole cycle, uh, that'll be the same as this one over here, this blue one. So I can say then that t equals four seconds. I'll maybe put that down here. Okay, what does that mean? Well, that means then I can just put everything together finally. I can say that means omega then is just going to be equal to 2 pi over 4. Now, 2 over 4 is 1 half. So that means I can say that omega equals, well, pi, and it'll be over 2 then because it was 1 half. Now, don't forget the units for omega. It's in radians per second. So I'll say radians per second like this. And there we go. We've got our answer for omega. Yay. Okay, now we're asking for the phase angle in part C. Now, what's the phase angle? Remember, that's letter phi. That means we have to know, uh, remember what phase angle tells us. It tells us how far left or right is my whole graph shifted. So the key thing then to recognize then is going to be how far is this whole thing right here shifted? And do you notice everything's been shifted to the left? And by how many units? Well, by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there's 8 units total, you know, units, eight total, you know, pieces here. And it's been shifted to the left by one out of eight. So I could say it's shifted to the left by one eighth of a cycle. Does that make any sense? Like watch, I can take this point and move it to the left. So this is by one eighth of a cycle, right? Every point is one eighth of a cycle. One over eight. This point right here has been shifted to the left by one over eight. Okay. Now it's important to remember what is a whole cycle. A whole cycle is 2 pi, isn't it? So a whole cycle of 2 pi shifted to the left by 1 over 8. It's going to be 2 pi over 8. Well, what's 2 pi divided by 8? Well, 2 over 8 is 1 over 4, so it's going to be pi over 4. Therefore, that's my answer. My phase angle, then, is just going to be pi over 4. And what are the units we use for this? We use radians. So that was a little bit weird, right? But that's how we figure out from a fraction of a cycle to radians. There we go. Now finally, we're asking for what is the velocity at t equals 0.5 seconds. Now that might seem a little bit impossible. I thought actually there was two ways of doing it. So the first way is sort of the, the quicker way, which I could just say, maybe I'll just say quickly here. Uh, well, what do I say here? Well, at t equals 0.5 seconds, that means it's right here, right? So that means right here, we're looking at this point right exactly here, this point right here. Well, what do we know? We know that at this point right here, what can we say? We can say that at that point we have x equals, well, isn't it the maximum displacement? So it's x zero. And if you think about something going left and right and left and right, like we've been looking at before, let's say it was like uh, some spring, for example, 
uh, something like this right here. If you're at maximum displacement, where are you? Well, uh, this right here, this is x equals 0. But if you're way over here, that's at x equals x0. And if you think about this, if we are at x equals x0, that means we're over here. That means the velocity must be 0 because it stops technically here. So that was sort of the quicker way to say, uh, well, at that point, then we have v equals 0. So that was one way to do it. And that was, I think, the quicker way. But if you want to do it the slower way with the equation, we can do that too. So we have an equation for the speed. It goes v equals omega x0 times cosine of omega t plus phi. This is just from your data booklet. Now we're going to have to know each of the variables, so let's go back and uh, look. So we've got omega, for example, what was that? That was equal to pi over 2. Okay, what else did we have? Did we have x0? Well, we sure did. x0 was equal to 4. And now we know that phi is equal to uh, pi over 4. Oh, actually, we also need one more thing. We need to know t. And t is actually going to be, well, uh, 0.5, but I'm going to say it's 1 half, just to make it a little bit easier to look at. So watch very carefully, then. I'm just going to slowly fill it in. So that means v equals, what's omega? Omega is pi over 2. Okay, so I'll say pi over 2. Then I multiply that by x0. x0 is 4. All right, I have a 4 there. Times a cosine of, let's see, what's omega again? Oh, yeah, it's pi over 2, so I'll put that down. Uh, times t, t is 1 half, so I'll multiply that by 1 half. I'll do it like this here, plus phi, and phi was pi over 4. Okay, so although it looks a little bit gross, let's keep going and not panic here. So what's uh, 4 times pi over 2? Well, I'll just write it down at least. It's 4 pi over 2. We'll do some more steps, don't worry. Times a cosine of, and let's see now, uh, pi times 1 over uh, 2 times 2. This can be pi over 4, so I'll say pi over 4 plus pi over 4. Okay, I keep going then. So what is uh, 4 over 2? That's just equal to 2. And what is pi over 4 plus pi over 4? Well, it's 2 pi over 4, which, by the way, is just pi over 2. So that means I'm going to keep going then and say, oh, that means it's going to be just a 2 pi here. So 2 times pi times a cosine of pi over 2. Okay, well then we need to know what is cosine of pi over 2, and it turns out cosine of pi over 2 depends now, uh, if you want to just use your calculator you can, cosine of pi over 2 will be 0. Or uh, depending on which math class you take, you might know about radians, it turns out pi over 2 is 90 degrees. If you think about a unit circle, you go to the right, uh, start to the right, I mean you go, to, you go around by 90 degrees right here like this. And cosine, by the way, is the uh, x value, so you have an x value of 0. Basically, it depends on how you've learned how to do it, but either way, you get a 0. 0 times 2 pi is still 0. So you end up with an answer of 0, so that means you can state then that, ah, that means v equals 0. Phew, a couple ways of doing it. Was this second way longer? Absolutely. Either way works. It's fine. I just want to show you both different ways. One is with sort of quicker logic. The other is with the equation. But they both get you there. And if you can use your calculator to solve this, then who cares? You can totally do this.